Hey, you know what? It's our 50th episode today. <laughs> yeah, it is our first big. It's our first big anniversary. That's our show number 50. So yeah, 50, 50 episodes. Yeah, one episode for each new gray hair I got since the very first show. Yeah, 50. Five episodes for each 10 kilograms of excess weight that I got since the very first show. Yeah, 50, 20, 25 episodes for each good joke that we've had here since the very first show. So yeah, 50 episodes. That's exactly 49 episodes more than anyone thought that we were gonna last. Amazing. People often say to me, Vic, put on your pants, please. But what they also say to me is, hey, Vic, you've been hosting this game show for more than half a year. Do you feel like a celebrity? And I'll tell you, no, I don't. I mean, sometimes it is really tough for me when people recognize me on the street, you know, when they see me, they start yelling my name, asking me, you know, to pose for a picture with their kids, they want me to send their breasts, and the women are even worse. But it's not tough. What is really tough is when people on the streets or, I don't know, in the supermarket, uh, they see me, then they realize who I am, and then, you know, they try to, to swipe me like that, you know, with their motion, with, with their finger, just to get rid of me. And then I go, I'm not on the screen, I'm, I'm right here. And they go like, huh, well, it's like he's in the room. <laughs> and I'm like, I am in the room. Where's Lydia? She's not here, but she will be here very soon. But uh, I'm just kidding. Of course, I'm not a celebrity by any means. Celebrity is someone who's, who's on TV, so I'm not even sure if you can, can consider hosts of other online shows celebrities, because I don't watch any other trivia games. I've never watched them. Uh, because, you know, I don't have time to watch crappy shows. I'm too, too busy making crappy shows. Anyways, I was recently thinking about how would things turn out if... Uh, IQ Quiz wasn't a quiz at all. I mean, there are, you know, thousands of shows on the internet, and I don't really think that trivia games are the most popular ones. No, I don't, I don't believe that, sorry. As far as I'm concerned, people are crazy about, you know, three kinds of internet shows. They, they are, you know, like cooking shows, uh, the how-to shows, and the fitness and health shows. So there's also some Snapchat premium shows that I heard of, but I believe the IRS is the only fan club that they have. So I'll be honest with you, I am a fan of the how-to shows, and there are tons of them. How to put makeup on your face, how to fix your washing machine, how to win a jail contest with a plastic bottle, and some other similar stuff. The last one about the bottle was, was pretty dirty, yeah? Sorry about that. I'm not that dirty myself, to be honest. Sometimes I, I'm a clean freak. I always, you know, I always carry sanitizer with me. You know, it's some kind of a, of a gel made of spirit. I always carry this thing with me. I've been doing that for, for years. And now, when I quit drinking, I can sanitize my hands with it. So, if I had to, a how-to show, I would keep it clean. If I had a show like this, I would tell my viewers how to carve a dildo from a soap bar. Yeah. This thing would make you feel clean and dirty at the same time. Anyways, you know, cooking shows are perhaps even more popular than how-to shows. If you know some great receipts, you can share them and get millions of you. Uh, I have only one secret receipt, to be honest, and it is for mashed potatoes. Add an egg. It makes them fluffy. I'm not much of a chef, but... I know how to fluff your potatoes. Anyways, it's not actually a very good idea for me to become a chef, even on the internet. I'm already fat, but it must be very easy to put on some weight if you are a cook. Unless, of course, you are cooking meth. Then the kilograms, you know, just melt away, starting with your, with your teeth, of course. But I'll be honest with you, I can't cook at all. I wish I could, though, because cooking at home is really the way to go, because I don't like all of that, you know, fancy restaurants, you know, the ones that expect you to eat some creature of the sea and then leave some tip for the most expensive laxative in your life. Anyways, a fancy restaurant for me is basically a place without, without the word kebab in the name. To me, it's fancy when they have those, you know, weirdy, weird pointy things. What do they call it? Yeah, forks. I like food that I can eat with, 
with my fingers, you know, burgers, french fries, uh, vodka, soup, and what was the, what was the, the third kind of internet shows I was talking about in the beginning? Right, the fitness and health shows. You know, the ones that teach you how to stretch and how to do yoga. And yoga, of course, uh, is uh, the practice of physical and spiritual and mental discipline from, from India or something. But I have recently read somewhere that yoga can be dangerous. Yeah, it can be, but, but a, lot of, a lot of pleasant things are dangerous, like soap carving or heroin. So yoga can lead to a lot of danger, danger injuries. Because people sit in their chairs all day, you know, they work and they all are, you know, twisted like pretzel. And then they expect that yoga would be easy and they just, just hurt themselves. It's like when you were a brainless translator all your life and then you're going out and trying to host an intellectual quiz. It hurts. Anyways, I did practice yoga for a while. You, you wouldn't know by, by looking at me now, but I used to enjoy yoga, I did. You wouldn't know by looking at me that I used to enjoy life, but but I did. And yeah, I still do yoga sometimes. I find it, you know, very, very relaxing. I wake up in the morning, I bend my nose to my growing for half an hour, and then I start doing yoga. By the way, did you know that at some parts of Asia, children start to practice yoga as young as at uh, three years old? It keeps them fresh for, you know, a long day at the shoe factory. Ah, stop. I, I know, I know. I think it's too much. Child labor is bad, but the jokes about child labor is even worse. We, we want, we will, we will never say that on the show. Uh, let's pretend that, that, that didn't happen. That tasteless piece of crap didn't occur. We, which, tasteless, which tasteless piece of crap, you can ask? Anyone you found tasteless. No, I'm serious. There's so many dirty things that I'm saying. I should wash my mouth with the, with the soap. And it could be a pretty interesting process if you saw this how-to show about carbon on my channel. And you know what else can be very interesting? Hmm. Our prize font! Show them the money, come on! Show them! One thousand dollars and something for your imagination. Right here on the palm of my hands is a uh, mobile phone. Just imagine it's, it's here. So, uh, right there on the screen of your phone you'll see a question after it appears you'll have like 12 seconds to decide which one of the following like three answer choices is correct you made your decision then tap the button with the correct answer choice so that's actually the process that you must go through uh, I don't know during all the 12 rounds that we have for you this evening so you can't start answering on question number four or I don't know three or 11, just 12 in the row, from the first one to the final one. It is okay to be wrong at least once because you have an extra bonus life. And by the way, as many friends as you bring in, that's actually how many bonus lives you can get. And, but you can use only two of them during one broadcast. So let's take a look at our viewer count. It is 2,262 people watching us online right now. Thanks for being us here during our anniversary 50th episode of IQ Quiz. And let's take a look at the chat. And I see Ahmed Y said hi and nothing else. And here comes one of the greatest lines in the history of entertainment. It's a great day for IQ Option and it's a great day to expand your financial knowledge. Therefore, it's time to play the game. Here comes question number one. So, a part of a company's profits, which is paid to shareholders, is called tax, dividend, or discount. So, that's actually the point, the final point, the final spot where you can join us. If you're not about, you know, joining us in the next, like, four seconds, you're out. A reduction in the usual price of something is called a discount. An amount of money that you have to pay to the government so that it can you know, pay for public services is a tax. The part of uh, a company's profits, which is paid to people who have shares in the company, is a dividend. And 1,793 people knew the correct answer, and that's actually a pretty good number for uh, anniversary show maybe, but 
That's that's pretty decent for an regular show, but for you know, for the anniversary show, come on, just smart up, please. Question number number two is here. Which of these is a bank? Verizon, Bayer, or Barclays? Yep, some pretty some easy questions here for for this part of question number two. Yeah, we didn't want you to to feel any troubles with answering question number two during this anniversary episode. So you're welcome. Verizon is an American telecommunications company which offers wireless products and services. Bayer is a German、uh, multinational pharmaceutical and life science company and one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. Barclays is a British multinational invest- investment bank and financial services company. And you know what? One thousand and two hundred and ninety-one people. Knew the correct answer, and let me please tell you something. Thank you. Question number three is here. So, THB is the abbreviation for Thai baht, Turkmenistan manat, or Tanzanian shilling. They all sound so beautiful. Baht, manat, shilling. You know how to call how you can call the scrooge person who loves his money, who loves his butts, bot head, or, or you know, don't touch my bot, it's mine. So the currency code for the Turkmenistan manat is T M T. The currency code for the Tanzanian shilling is T Z S. The Thai bot is the official currency of the Kingdom of Thailand. Its code is T H B. And 1,146 people knew the correct answer. And please let me remind you: if you joined us during I don't know question number two or question number three or maybe four, that's actually only for you know for viewing purposes. You can join in us、uh, with the purpose of winning anything. So just watch and I don't know, and relax, but slower. Question number four is here. A very deep, long, and painful recession is called amortization, depression, or globalization. Yeah, these things are getting serious, you know. That's some kind of a adult game. I mean, for for adult people, not for adult audience, but maybe I'll show you something in the later stages. So, a situation in which the value of intangible assets, such as you know, the tans falls because of their age or how much they have been used to, you know, it it's called amortization, a generalized、uh, historical process through which more economic、uh, activity takes place across you know national borders is globalization. A very deep, long, and painful recession in which unemployment、uh, rises to very high levels and economic、uh, output does not bounce back is a depression. And 1,662,、uh, sorry, people knew the correct answer. And please let me remind you that if you gave a wrong answer, you can always bring yourself back into the race. If you, if you what? Huh? Will you guess? Yeah. If you have the extra bonus life, so within five seconds after you gave the wrong answer, just tap this button and you're back in. Welcome back. And here comes question number number five. When did Tesla hold its IPO? In 2000? In 2003? In 2010? Hmm. You can always, you know, guess, but it's. It's better to know such stuff. Let's take a look at our chat, and there's totally nothing. Just oh, and I just said L O L dealing. I guess I'm not dealing, but I'm pretty much L O L this morning. Anyways, Tesla was established back in 20 2003 by Martin Eberhard and Mark Turpinen under the name of、uh, Tesla Motors. So it could not hold an IPO in 2000 or 2003. The company launched its IPO on the Nasdaq exchange in 2010,、uh, where it actually offered 
13.3 million shares at a price of $17 per share, raising a total of total of 220 26 million dollars and 697 people knew the correct answer and that's actually the exact amount of people quantity of people who will witness the next question but if you use your extra bonus live you'll be there you'll be among those lucky guys so question number six is actually here so Vitalik Buterin is a co-founder of Tron Neo or Ethereum? And maybe something on our chat, but uh, some, maybe uh, no. Just, uh, nothing. Uh, you see, I'm trying. Tron is the official cryptocurrency of the Tron project, founded by Justin Sun. The NEO project was originally uh, launched in 2014 as AntShares with development resources provided by founder uh, Da Hongfei and Eric Zhang. Vitalik Buterin is a Russian-Canadian programmer and writer primarily known as a co-founder of Ethereum and as a co-founder of Bitcoin magazine and 452 people knew the correct answer. That's actually not bad, but that's it, guys. I can't tell you how much a door I can be about you, but I'm not a door at all. That's freaking anniversary episode. Please, please, smart up, come on. Question number seven is here. I know we can, come on. When food prices rise more rapidly than prices of, you know, other goods, it's called agflation, deflation, or stagflation. And I know this one will be good. Yeah, I know that you'll give a lot of correct answers. There will be like 14,000 correct answers, I believe. That's my bet, anyway. So. Uh, in economics, uh, stagflation is a premonto of stagnation and inflation. Uh, it is a situation in which the inflation rate is high, uh, the e economic growth rate slows, and unemployment remains steadily high. The general recline in prices for goods uh, and services occurring when the inflation rate falls below 0%. It is called deflation. The situation when food prices rise more rapidly than prices of other goods and services is called agflation. The word is a combination of the terms agriculture and inflation. It is, just take a look here, I was almost right. Uh, what was the exact number that I predicted? 14,000. It's almost there. It's 330 people who gave the correct answer. Thank you very much. You are never disappointing. So here comes question number eight, I believe. Here it is. This is an American construction equipment company, Costco, Caterpillar, or FMC Corporation. Hey, what's an American construction equipment company? Come on, man up. That's maybe that's some kind of a question for a real. Uh, Man's man. He's a man. Ah, uh, got so close. Thanks for your show. Hmm, I didn't see the name of this user, but you're always welcome. We're working for you. Costco is an American multinational corporation which operates a chain of membership only warehouse clubs. FMC Corporation is an American chemical manufacturing company. Caterpillar is an American Fortune 100 corporation and the world's largest equipment manufacturer. And 358 people knew the correct answer. And for those smart fellows, and maybe even, even for you, hey, yeah, I'm talking to you. The following information is for you. If you give a wrong answer, you have like five seconds to bring yourself back into the game. So, if you have an extra bonus left, just tap the heart-shaped button, I believe it's somewhere right, right here, and you're back in. Welcome. Question number nine has arrived. 
A company that dominates its sector without having a complete monopoly is called gorilla, killer bee, or elephant. Oh, I just love that kind of questions, you know. So amusing, they're just adorable. You know, like gorilla, elephant, bee, alligator, crocodile, crocodile gator. Oh, I love animals. Elephants is a slang for large institutional investors that can uh, that can move markets on their own. They're so strong. Firms or individuals that help other companies avoid takeovers are called killer bees. A gorilla is a company that dominates its industry but not necessarily has a complete monopoly. And 207 people knew the correct answer. And maybe, maybe that's actually the point where you should use your hmm, extra bit. Guys, I don't have any clues for you. You should decide on your own. Here comes question number, number 10. So, the world's leading gold production country as of 2017 was Russia, Australia, or China. Yeah, episode number 50, but my new things are still keep coming, you know. Maybe that's the next big thing for another 50 episodes. Yeah, that's probably my my most creative one. Just take a look here. Huh? Uh, the good one, I know you'd like it. So in 2017, Global Gold Mine Production was a reported 3 1,247 tons. In 2017, Russia produced 270 tons and took the third spot on the you know global list. Australia is number two with 295 tons. And for many years, China has been you know the top producing nation, accounting for 13% of global mine production. In 2017, China produced 426 tons of gold and 217 people knew the correct answer and I, I have no other words but thank you you are you are handsome I believe question number 11 is here come on this indicator was developed by George C. Lane in the 1950s MACD, Average True Range, or Stochastic Oscillator. I don't know why my new voice can be my new thing. Yeah. That's actually my <clears throat> natural voice. I'm just pretending to sound like... Like Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right, sometimes. But that's actually my my natural voice. So, the average true range is a technical analysis volatility indicator developed by J. Wells Wilder for commodities back in 1970s. MACD, short for Moving Average Convergen Convergence and Divergence, is an indicator used in technical analysis of stock prices created by Gerald Appel in the 1970s. The stochastic oscillator is a momentum type indicator that determines overbought and oversold positions. It was created and introduced by George C. Lane in the 1950s. Whew. That's hard. And <coughs> talking with this voice as well. So, 193 people knew the correct answer. And maybe that's the exact amount of people, that's the exact quantity of users who will share the next question. But I do believe that's actually the point, the spot where you should use your extra bonus lives. So please use it because there's nothing there's nothing else that can be valid more in our in our business than the final round. And here it is, final round. Mm -hmm. This European country has the highest VAT rate. Hungary, Greece, or Croatia? I don't know. Wait. You still, I think you can still hear me, but.
And that was the correct answer. So, <coughs> so the lowest VAT rate in Europe is in Luxembourg. It is actually only 17%. Uh, Hungary, Greece, and Croatia are the countries where the VAT rate is higher than average, you know, among European countries. The VAT rate in Greece <coughs> is 24 percent. Croatia's VAT rate is 25 percent. Hungary has the highest VAT rate in Europe and it's 27 percent. So the correct answer to this question to the final round question was clear to wow 130 people. Yep and these people will share our Grand Prix of one thousand dollars. So each and every one of you of you uh, will Get like seven point sixty nine dollars, seven bucks and seventy cents. Isn't that incredible, huh? They're they're saying that it is. So here's the point where I should call you amazing, but ah uh, no, I'll call you fifty times as handsome as you were fifty episodes ago. And that's it. Yep, from now on you are legally fifty times as handsome as you were. You know, 50 episodes ago. And to prove it, we will show your nicknames. That's right, you can see your your nicknames on the screens of your smartphones, your handsome phones, and your smartphones. So once again, we'd like to congratulate you on winning this money, you know, like uh, seven bucks something, it's actually nice at any time. So, congrats guys. And thank you for your attention. Thanks for being here with us during this anniversary episode. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your knowledge. You know, thank you for your luck, for your well-deserved success. And thank you for joining us during this anniversary broadcast. See you next time. And as always, never stop thinking. And see you later. Goodbye, everybody.